Hey, it's Tom, and welcome back to another season of the Tom Ray's Art Podcast. The Tom Ray's Art Podcast. No, just Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I love that I changed it to that. Anyway, so um, this season, let's see, the last time I had done the show was, I think the final episode was in May, I think, right before quarantine happened. Or right during while it happened. I had I released them. They were already recorded. I had gone out and met people, recorded them face-to-face in public. That was fun. I remember those. I took the summer off, which as I normally do when I break up, like I'll record a bunch of episodes, break them up into seasons, and then release another set. Because that way I can take time to kind of focus on things that have changed, maybe think about what I want to do differently the next season. I decided uh, one of the ideas I've always wanted to do is video versions of the podcast as well as the audio version. So I'm now actually recording videos of these interviews as well as the audio. You can go to see the video on either my website, TomRaysWebsite.com or uh, on the YouTube channel, which is YouTube.com slash T-M-R-A-Y. Tom Ray without the O, basically. That never occurred to me before. Maybe it did. Regardless, the other reason I wanted to do videos as well is because with this quarantine, everybody's gotten used to talking and chatting online. Because of being quarantined, a lot of us kind of have gotten used to just being on a video call. Plus, that way I could also do interviews with people that aren't necessarily in Madison. They could be all over the country. And some that I've talked to already are out of the country. They're in different countries. That's really cool, and I dig that. I can't go out and get a haircut. I'm sitting inside all day. And I'm like, what better time to film what you're doing or talking to people is when I got all this long hair. Anyway, for those of you on the audio, take my word for it. My hair is getting ridiculous. Another thing was I started booking Facebook appointments with following all these people online. And I didn't know where to start. I'd set up a couple interviews and I'm like, there's so many people I want to talk to. So I had sent out a message to my mailing list and said I had just set up appointment booking on my Facebook page. It's a button at the top and I was doing interviews Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. Now, I didn't know if anybody was going to sign up and one of the first people that signed up, and lots of people did. I actually have a bunch. I only have a few openings left. I'm kind of keeping it open for a little while. So if you want to, go to my Facebook page and sign up to do an interview. There are a few slots left. But one of the people who did sign up was a person who had been on the podcast before. He was on a couple seasons ago, and his name is Scott Pyburn. He was traveling with the comic book circuit and going with Mighty Con around the the U.S. But what he found was, while he was out there, there was a lot more toys that were kind of successful in their booths. People were interested in that. So he started to adapt that way. And in his booth, he had a couple of toy figures that he would put out. After everything got shut down, he couldn't go out with the comic circuit anymore. He couldn't travel with it anymore because there's nothing out there right now. You can't travel with There are no public events. And it made him kind of rethink what he wanted to do. And through all of that and trying to get into the comic book circuit and through his drawings he discovered an online course that made him realize there was a thing all along that he enjoyed that was right there with him in the comic circuit that really is kind of his passion now. And what he started doing is he's making his own action figures and toys. He's building his own customs. There's even a market for, uh, they're called bootleg toys, but really what they are is they're toys that don't exist that you wish they did. So here is... The interview that I have with Scott Pyburn, and it was great to talk with him and meet with him again. And also it was great too because it was a way for me to test my first video interview to see how it would go. And I was comfortable with him because we knew each other and I didn't have to worry about like things not working for someone I just met. And oddly enough, it worked out perfectly fine. So I went on to do some more. So here's my interview with Scott Pyburn on this episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. Let's 
let's do a little backstory first. So when I talked to you last on the podcast, first of all, mm -hmm. hi, Scott. How are Hi, you? Tom. I'm good. I'm doing good. Huh? I mean, all things considered, there's a lot going on with unemployment and because I'm a school bus driver by day. Oh, that's right. On, yeah, and we've been on furlough, but you know, we can, we can, we can. Uh, is this official? Are we talking now? Yes, is we're we're of officially podcast? talking now. Now, now oh, our cadence okay. and everything has changed. Now we're all going to be professional. Okay, so since we talked last, we were doing. Uh, I was doing shows the one season when I came up in Wisconsin. And met you, and I was doing. You were artwork. you were traveling the comic book circuit, right? There yeah, the I was doing. Circuit. I was yeah, I was doing like Mighty Con and you know the small forty dollar table circuits, not the not the Wizard World three hundred dollar table circuits, which is nuts, and, which is crazy. You've got to be doing professional business, and I was again. I'm trying to transition from hobbyist to professional at that time. Yeah, um, but I wasn't selling a lick of anything. Oh, sorry, my bad. That's my air compressor. <laughs> So where were I where before the bus stopped? Um, yeah. Good Lord. <laughs> so I was doing this small con circuit and wasn't selling a lick of anything. And after the one season, I said, you know what? I, sitting there for five, ten hours, sometimes one day, sometimes two. No, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. So I took a break and started drawing again, sketching again. Um, then Corona happened in March. And I'm a school bus driver by day, artist by night. And what happened was we got furloughed. Yeah. You know, school shut up like that. And uh, so yeah, basically I've been... Bus drivers aren't really going to take people anywhere if the schools aren't open. No. Well, yes and no. I mean, the sports are going this fall. I'm actually working six hours a week, like two days a week, but it's still, it's not enough to make a living. So during the summer, I was like, okay, I'm just going to refocus on my art, figure out what I want to do. At first, I got into uh, doing caricatures, mm -hmm. and I was following uh, Tom Richmond from Mag Magazine. I was going to take one of his um, his seminars, signed up for that, but COVID canceled that. So I've been following him online and doing doing stuff online. You were going to go and, somewhere and do one of his seminars? Well, he was going to come to Schaumburg, which is like 20 minutes from my house. Oh. And... Uh, it got canceled because COVID, you know, all the hotels, it was going to be at a hotel, even though it was only like 15 people. I was like, nope, we're shutting down. Everything got shut down. So it was actually postponed until like three weeks from now, this is September 21st. Mm -hmm. And that's my anniversary weekend. So, and, and uh, I kind of shifted gears from focusing out of caricatures to something else, which I'll get to in a minute. Um. So yeah, I was going to take his seminar, and I'm um, I'm in his caricature group, and I'm following online. And every day there was like a, he called it the daily Corona caricature. <laughs> so it was stay at home. Here's a celebrity. Draw the celebrity today. And I started doing like a Corona comic. You know, I, I did did a bunch of those, and I posted them on my personal Instagram page, and then just kind of shifted gears and lost focus. The mm -hmm. problem when you stop working is you start to get scatterbrained. It's like, what do I want to do today? Okay. okay, I'll do this and I'll do that. And then you go this way and you go that way. Mm -hmm. So I was doing this um, Corona Cures on Tom's page, and one day he picked Richard Pryor. Yeah. And so I'm a big toy guy, uh, you know, collect toys and whatnot, and I can can show you my studio. It's kind of dark in here, but I'll give you a slight, slight tour of the studio here. I mean, I've got all kinds of toys and collectibles. And those are just around. like ones you've bought and things like yeah, that. Yeah, mostly mostly some of them are like yeah, collected. Yeah, like yeah, like the the um the Chris Reeves uh, the Superman and the um uh Hawkeye Pierce I made. Those are like custom figures that I made way back in the day. So, we started doing these caricatures and I decided to do Richard Pryor from the toy. Okay. And I and I did this card and I was and I painted him as like the action figure. Now, are you familiar with the with the movie The Toy from the 80s? Yes. Very much so, yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a classic Richard Pryor film. It's very politically incorrect for the day. Oh, yeah. Um, well, it kind of was then too. <laughs> yeah, it really was then too, but it was a good statement back then. So, yeah. if you if, you know, if you haven't seen it, go seek it out. Watch it. Take it with a grain of salt. If you're a Richard Pryor fan, you'll enjoy it. Um, so I did this, and then I thought, I can actually make this an action figure, mm -hmm. like a real action figure. So I went out and I bought uh, like an old Luke Skywalker figure. So I basically took this, 
and I made this. Oh, neat. And so I did this as a custom one-up. I sculpted the head, and I sculpted, like, the Spider-Man pajamas on a Bespin Luke figure. Mm -hmm. And so I had fun with it. I'm like, you know what? This was fun. I'm like, I could do this. So I've shifted gears into doing bootleg three and three quarter inch figures, which was my love and passion back in the day. I collected, um, you know, Star Wars, GI Joe, you know, any three yeah. and three quarter inch figures I could get my hands on. And then I found this bootleg scene on Instagram with all these different kinds of bootleg bootleg toy guys who've been doing this for years, and just kind of fell into it. Mm -hmm. and, and started having fun with it. Huh. It, see, so, I, I didn't know that there was, or I haven't seen any of these bootleg guys uh, on Instagram. The only mm -hmm. person I know of, there's a person who has a YouTube channel, and it's fascinating. And whenever I watch it, I'll be like, holy crap, this video's been on for like 45 minutes, and I had no idea. And he makes figures, but he doesn't do, he doesn't do bootleg ones, and he's got like a really heavy Cajun accent. And he talks oh, wow. into yeah, and he talks into the mic like he he narrates it like it's is he is he the puppet guy? No, I wish I could remember. I should have looked it up before because there's a guy who talks with a Cajun accent called the Craftsman. Yeah, and he the has like a, and he, has he has a, hand, a puppet. It's the hand puppet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. love him. He's, yeah, he's great. And he's and great. his videos are like awesome. They're it, like yeah. they're high quality. Like it should be a TV show. And his his voice is just so soothing when he talks and he like whispers while he talks and he does the well, the whole thing must take him hours. But yeah. he doesn't yeah. he doesn't normally do bootlegs or when he does. Or I guess I haven't seen him. I just he has a little figure that he does that he keeps showing. And I just watched one right. recently where he shows how to do multiple sizes from the same yeah. uh, the same mold. Well, but it's but that's what it's, I've seen. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that because I that's part of what I started doing. I started customizing because um, I used to be a one six scale guy. So I used to do stuff in one six scale, which is twelve inch figures, GI Joes, Ken, Barbie scale with clothes and stuff. Okay. And so basically, what I did was I would take something like. This is a, a head of Bud Abbott from Abbott and Costello and Frankenstein that I got oh, um, okay. off a resin kit. So the craftsman showed me how to shrink it down. Right. Using so, using the mineral spirits. Yeah. So <laughs> mineral spirits. So you take the mold and using mineral spirits, you shrink it down. It's a But it's a very laborious process. Yes. Um, and, you know, it, I've spent so much money on, on relearning this craft. Um, it's, it's crazy, you know, mm -hmm. trying to shrink heads down from one six scale to one eighteenth scale is, is really a challenge. Yeah. And, and so the next step for me is get into sculpting. Right. And I want to start doing that. I want to start getting into digital sculpting because it's such a pain in the butt. I, I like mean, I can 3d almost... printing digital sculpting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, get a 3d printer, but i the one I've got my, my mind on is like $1,200. Okay. And then the software you can. That's you can why I've never gone software. into 3D printing. It's it's like wow, that's right. really cool. Uh, right. And oddly enough, at the comic convention that I ran into you at, uh, mm -hmm. I ran into there were actually several booths that had 3D printing, and they were giving away like I don't know if it's like a test pattern that comes with them, but all of them had like these little Starman figures. Like they were huh. just they were uh, the arms were out, the legs were separated, and it had a circular head. And every single one of them was handing them out, and they were like maybe an inch tall oh wow yeah and i, I got like four of them i lost all of them eventually but oh jeez <laughs> i had them in my pocket for a while no they were like good luck charms i kept them for a while and it was just really cool to like put my because it was during the fall and winter i put my yeah. hand in my pocket and it would be there and i'd be like oh and i just kind of like you know hold on to it while i walked with my hands in my pockets it was neat and then i was actually kind of sad when i lost the final one like i don't know when they fell out of my pocket or how anyway that's not important the uh <laughs> The thing was, is yeah, there was a lot of 3D printing there, but it seemed like they were, I think they were making more like um, sets or like, uh, what would it be? What would, what's the background called when you have, when you have action figures, but they come with oh, like, like, like dioramas. Yeah. Like dioramas. Yeah. They, they were making mm -hmm. more things like that or furniture yeah. or things like that, but you're looking to do actual action figures. Yeah, and there's there's a bunch of guys in this bootleg scene that are doing them, and they're 
some of them are having like produced in China, like real professional figures. Okay. And a lot of them are Star Wars knockoffs. I'm not. I, there's so many people doing Star Wars knockoffs. I am not interested in Star Wars knockoffs at all. Well, and um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the it's Disney and George Lucas, two of the biggest companies that go after you for making knockoffs. Yeah. There, well, here's the thing. There's the C&D. There, there have been some bootleg artists that I follow. Uh, Suck Lord is one of the guys. He's called the Suck Lord. I'll send you a bunch of links to these guys on Instagram. All right. Um, the uh, uh, Killer Bootlegs, which is a local guy out of Rockford, which I'm trying to get together with hopefully uh, in the middle of the month and, and pick his brain. Um, they've done, they've gotten some cease and desists. Um, really? One, one guy sent me a cease and desist because my first figure was going to be, um, the, the Jack Brown from the toy. Um, what? but they two were, things, yeah, this, they no, were, this was going to be, this was going to be the first, the first figure I was going to do. Okay. Um, he got a cease and desist for doing a Richard Pryor figure from the Richard Pryor estate. Oh, and okay. then, and then what happened was I was getting ready to ramp up on this figure and then George Floyd happened. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? A uh, middle-aged suburban white boy manufacturing a figure of a deceased black artist. Right. And granted, you're not really making mil- I'm not making any money off these. Even if I even if I produced a bunch and I made a couple thousand dollars, the amount of time and effort put into it, um, you're not making a whole lot. Mm-hmm. But it just the it just didn't seem right at the time. I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm not it's I'm not the right demographic for putting this figure out. I don't feel comfortable doing it. And then investigating Black Lives Matter, which if I was going to donate proceeds to which organization, you know, and shifting focus. And I don't want to get too political on it, but it was just one of those. If your gut says it's not the right time or it's not right to do it, don't do it. So I yeah. kind of shelved this project. I'd like to do it at some point because I'm an 80s fan. Um, and I love do I love eighties movies and eighties figures, but it just doesn't seem right to do it right now. Yeah. And well, the other thing too, is, uh, when you first said that you got a cease and desist, I thought that it would have been from the company that made the movie. Like they were going, oh, you can't copy this. And that would have been right. weird. Cause it's like the toy is yeah. an obscure movie. And no, I didn't get a cease and desist. Uh, oh. one of these other, one of these other bootleg guys who's, cause I posted this on Instagram and I, put out the question, should I make it? Because this, gotcha. again, this is right after George, George Floyd happened. And a lot of people were like, yeah, it's awesome. And a lot of people were like, eh, go with your gut. If your gut says don't make it, it's probably not the time. And right. then somebody instant messaged me and said, just be careful with doing Richard Pryor because he did do a figure. Uh, he did a Brewster's Millions figure yeah, and from that movie. And he got a cease and desist from, from the Richard Pryor state. And it was like he did one figure. And I'm I'm talking about I've I made molds of this. This is a molded figure. Right. Uh, I wasn't happy with the body, so I scrapped the body molds. I, I'm going to redo the body at some point, but I already invested a lot of money in in sculpting it, molding it, casting it, and it was just like, all right, maybe it's time put it on the shelf for a while and see what's what, you know. So that that leads me to the question of. Um... Why is there a bootleg market if it's kind of like you put it out there until you get a cease and desist? What's it, it, what's it, the point of the, the bootleg market? Um, the point of it, in a sense, is just creating something fun that, that inspires you, that you want to do. Um, you know, it's it's it costs a lot of money to get a license, Yeah. you know, to go to a studio and get a license for a licensed product. More of money course. than the average person can afford. So for me part of the reason I got into this was I wanted to create figures that of from films that I grew up in the eighties that I loved. And I started working down that path. And then I got into the scene and realized it's more about kind of the mashups and the twist ups Mm -hmm. and stuff that um, that's like, you cross this with that. Um, I had this little, little uh, Muppet figure of the Swedish chef and it's just like one of these Hallmark things. And it's, it's as Bork. And it's a torso yeah. figure. And then I had this Robbie the Robot. So one of the figures that I'm working on right now is this Swedish chef as a Borg uh, from Star Trek. And he's I all black, really kind of hard. <laughs> so instead of Borg, it's Bork. Right. <laughs> you know, and I got Puns. these utensils <laughs> from, uh, you know, the Borg arms. You know, one's got a spatula. Mm-hmm. One's got a you know, a tenderizer mallet. The other one's got a, got a cleaver. And what are you making those out of? 
So these are resin. So so okay. um, these are the actual plastics from the figures, from like the Borg. And I ordered these uh, accessories from the Swedish chef from the Palisades figure. So I kind of cut them down and combined them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put magnets in it to give him magnetic, oh. articul- marne- magnetic articulation. So I drilled out a hole and casted it as such. And so he's, he's going to be able to magnetically put the different attachments on and have like, right. okay, he's got the cleaver in one hand, he's got the, the mallet tenderizer in another hand, uh-huh. you know. And, and I even worked up a card, you know. But it's, it's a lot of work. That so, was going to be my next question. Yeah. yeah. So this is the mold for yeah. the base body. I just casted this, and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to open it. And I cast it in resin, and I have a a pressure pot, which let me show you. This is my pressure pot here. Okay. And I've, the compressor, which we heard already, is down there. So you cast the resin in the mold, you put it on there, you screw it down, you pressurize it to about 30, 40 pounds of pressure, and it takes all the air bubbles uh-huh. out of the cast. So when we pull this this figure out of the mold, and this is silicone. Two part silicone mm-hmm. that you so I made a one part you know I've cut it down, but when we pull him out of the mold, it should be a perfect cast. Yeah, you know no air bubbles, no no bubbles on the surface of the figure, nice and smooth. Now obviously I'll paint this figure because I'm casting him in black plastic because or black resin because the Robbie the robot legs are black mm-hmm. and there'll be less paint involved. So I'll paint the shirt, I'll paint the face, I'll paint the hat, and I'll paint the apron, hmm. you know. And so... Uh, but how long ahead. How long does that take to do? Well, it's a very labor-intensive process. So, so yeah. building the mold, building the mold, they use the Pringles can for this mold, and then it takes about four hours for this particular silicone to set up in the pressure pot. Mm-hmm. It takes about 10 minutes when you cast the resin, then I've got to clean up all these figures because there's all this little flashing. Um, sand them down. I've got to clean up all the accessories. So this is one of the accessory molds that I've made. So this is the spatula. All right. Oh, that came out nice. I had to actually put some more holes in. <laughs> I love that you're originally... looking at them for the first time while you're showing yeah. me. <laughs> well, this one, I this one I actually drilled holes in the mold because the corners of the, the resin wasn't getting down to the corners of the spatula because you can see how thin that is. Right. That's almost paper thin, but if you cast it under pressure, it pushes all that resin down into the thin spots of the mold. So casting all these little accessories, this is just a hand, and the hand is filled, so he's got a real hand. I'll have to drill that out. It's really hard to see. I apologize because it's dark in the basement, and it's and I'm casting in black resin. Right. But uh, I'll be posting these when they're painted and finished on Instagram. So you, I'm casting... I'm only going to do an addition of 10 of these. The first figure I did was this Yoda and it was, it was the child from, from the Mandalorian show on Disney. And I put him in carbonite. Okay. So, and again, and you're, you you're always basing these on to, to create these, you're using older figures or actual figures yes. that exist. Yeah. So the carbonite mold, here's a better picture of the actual, the actual uh, guy. Mm-hmm. So the carbonite mold was basically, it was a Donald Duck in carbonite with the three carbonite things. So I casted the box. Then I got the, the uh, figure of the Yoda when the, when the three and three quarter inch figure came out, which was like this tall. Okay. And I actually put him in, in the carbonite. So the originally I did it in black so I did the, the the base. Then I actually put the figure with his accessories in epoxy sculpt mm-hmm. to make him look like he's in carbonite. And right. then I casted it. And then I made a gang mold. I did like like seven, eight casts so I could pour like eight at a time. Okay. And so I and I did an addition of twenty-five. How many did I sell? Right. Two. That's two. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. So with all this, you just explained the I mean, I love the concept. Like when I see those videos that I was talking about, I'm like, oh, that would be really neat to do. Uh, It's also, like I said, I watched it and I was amazed. I spent 45 minutes watching it. The actual process is several days uh, and I'm watching it compressed. So like as I'm being amazed at that length of time watching it, 
the making it is crazy. So what is the payoff, really, aside from going, oh, it's really neat, which is a question for any artwork that you do or any creative uh, thing that you do. I mean, it's the same with music or painting or whatever. Yeah. But but so how how you sold two, what is that in relation to what, <laughs> doing more with it or is it just kind of a hobby? Well, right now it's kind of a hobby because we're living in the age of Corona. Yeah. Okay? My, my concern with when I did all those shows, I realized that nobody wants art per se. You know, I was, they want a, I was they want a product. They want a product. So people are people like sketch cards, posters. You walk around the conventions. You've done it. I've done mm -hmm. it. You see billions of booths, and they're selling prints for ten bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. Yada yada yada. And if if you've got one of these huge booths and you're really really great, maybe you sell a bunch of prints. Right. But what do these what do these people do with them? They hang them up in their walls. How many how many prints can you hang up on a wall? So part of me transitioning to a product, to an action figure, is being able to take my artwork, which I've, I've done some mock-ups for some other cards, for some other figures that I wanted to do. So what I did was I, I was drawing these sketches, and I would make these cards. Mm -hmm. So I transitioned. I took the artwork from Sean Connery, The Wind and the Lion, John Ritter from Hero at Large, these sketches I did Which in my sketchbook. Which we discussed online that you yeah. were amazed that I knew what that was. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, you know, even the Baby Yoda was a sketch in my sketchbook that I just drew one day. And so, I, you know, I threw some regular art behind it and made it more of a Star Wars card. Yeah. Um, one of the other figures I did like seven of that I'm going to release is Zorro the Gay Blade. Mm -hmm. You know, I did this sketch in my sketchbook. You know, quick sketches like, you know, okay, Sean Connery, Hunt for Red October. Um so I did all these sketches in my sketchbook, and I'm like, all right, what can I do with them now? When I started transitioning to action figures, I'm like, you know what? I can make action figures. But then I started doing, doing, you know, I did the first one, and I thought it was going to be a home run. It's Star Wars. Everybody likes Star Wars. It's the yeah. Mandalorian. Everybody loves the Mandalorian. And people didn't get it. Why is the, Mandal why is the baby in Carbonite? And it's like, it's a joke. It's like, right. have you seen the first Han season Solo. of The Mandalorian? Well, have no, you seen I The Mandalorian? No, it's Plus? oddly enough, uh, I am a, uh, you know, Star Wars from back in the day guy. But then yeah. when Phantom Menace came out, I saw that. And then I was like, eh. And then I didn't watch the rest of them. <laughs> so, yeah. so I kind of gave up on Star Wars. Sure, sure. And a lot of people did. Honestly, the, 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 even the new trilogy sucked. But this Mandalorian series that Jon Favreau did on Disney Plus is freaking awesome. I it's, have heard just, that. It's really it's really good. So, but this whole baby Yoda the child character was like, all right. I am aware he, of baby he, Yoda. I I yeah. I do surf the internet and it was impossible yeah, he, not to run across it. Well, he <laughs> falls in love with this character. This character is the bounty and he's supposed to turn him into the bad guys and he basically he goes against the bounty hunter's code and decides to save the child and then he's trying to take the child to his home. Mm -hmm. And he's supposed to deal with that. Well, my my joke with making this this carbonite kid was, what if he just said, oh fuck it, the kid's not worth it, mm -hmm. throws him in carbon, car throws him in carbonite, and I'd seen some other baby Yodas in carbonite out there, so I thought yeah, this would be a home run. Again, I don't have a name yet, so maybe that's part of it. Um, I'm sitting on 24 finished figures, so I, I decided I'm not going to make a whole bunch of figures and expect to sell them. But part of me is also like. We're living in the time of Corona. When I can go back and I can do shows again, I'll have a stockpile of inventory. Yeah. You know, so, but 25 is like the extreme. But I'm, what I'm is gonna... your plan for doing that? It's easy to make stuff. Yeah. And if you want to do stuff with it or sell it to people or um, even build awareness about how to get it, like what, what is your plan? Do you have a plan for doing it or like what have yeah. you done already? So, so my plan, I've, I've done quite a few, few one-off figures, um, that I'm going to put up for sale eventually. I mean, and I did silly stuff. I did, um, well, the second figure that I started doing was I did this, um, Ludo from the labyrinth and I casted him in brown, but then I had a bunch of glitter. So I casted him, I did a, a I've got 10 of these in different styles and he sculpted from a Sully mcdonald's figure mm -hmm. and then i casted the face the labyrinth this this game company put out these uh ludo figures 
and they put out these giant figures, and I casted the face from him. Okay. So I kind of mashed them up. And then I also made it – he's got man, magnetic articulation. So Okay, so you have you can, done the you, magnet thing before. So, yeah, so you can pose him. You can turn his head, you know, but the head, heads are all – they're all magnetized. Mm-hmm. And I've got 10 of these in different colors. They're – they're glow in the dark. They're glitter. They're they're like ten different colors. And if you go on my Instagram, which is Toysaholics, uh, T O Y Z A H O L I K S on Instagram, you can see pictures of the nine that I've got to finish putting together. The problem is the magnetic magnetic articulation. I didn't cast that into the mold, so I've got to dremel it out and line the magnets up, and okay. it's a pain in the butt. So that's one of the things I did. I've got I had a leftover Ludo arm. So I just decided to make a glow-in-the-dark Wampa one-off. All right. And he actually glows in the dark. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. I'd have to like <laughs> hold it up there. And That's all right. There and, and are you just it. promoting it through Instagram or are you advertising? Yes. Yeah, right now I'm trying to get my Instagram following up. Okay. So that's my big thing is trying to get eyeballs because eyeballs will lead hopefully to sales at some point. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do. And I'm also trying to figure out what I want to do. So I did some silly one-offs. The problem sometimes with getting on Instagram and getting online is you feel like you got to keep up uh-huh. with all the other with all the other people. So I felt like oh, I got to produce, I got to produce, I got to produce, I got to get this stuff out, I got to get mm-hmm. this stuff out. And you get burnt out. Um, and part of it is, you know, you put your heart and soul into one or two figures and people are like, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. Well, how do you show your support? Well, I love it. Right. Got to buy something. Got to buy something. You know, it's nice to get the eyeballs. It's nice to get the likes. But but if you're not financially being supported also, it can get disheartening at times. So I just decided to take a step back from that. And, and, and part of it right now is the desperation of being unemployed, you know, living in Coronaville where it's like I can't even go find another job right now, you know. Mm-hmm. So jobs are limited. So I started instead of doing, all right, I'm going to take take a step back and I'm just going to do one-offs, which are original, one-of-a-kind figures. Some of them are silly and stupid. Every every bootleg artist does a invisible figure, which is basically a blank card. It's a card with no figure in it. Mm-hmm. And one day I'm watching, uh, searching for Bobby Fischer. I saw that. On your... <laughs> I... <laughs> and so I did the Bobby Fischer card. It's like, Bobby Fischer, reclusive chess master. It's like you can't find him because he's not there. <laughs> right. And so, how I mean, are, do, by the, by the way, while you're showing me that, how are you printing these card bat or these toy bags? Oh, that's a very good question. So I have a Canon Pixma printer. I print these on photo stock in my house in my basement. Yeah. I do photo stock on both sides, and I literally spray line them up. I cut the corners. I got a round corner cutter. I got a, a peg punch, uh-huh. and I use spray glue to put them together. And then I use some double sided tape to put the put the plastic on the car. Because I'm so, I'm just as fascinated by the backs that you did. Like when you first started doing this, that was what you were posting online. Was you doing the backs and like saying things are coming up, or you have yeah, a new yeah. idea you're trying out? And and yeah. I was looking at those backs, going, is where is he getting these? I mean, they look like legit toy backs. <laughs> yeah, and and some of them. Here's the thing: like, I took took the um, so like the squares with the coming soon figures. Uh huh. Those are from a GI Joe card template. So I basically copied and pasted in Photoshop the squares. Yeah. And then I inserted in my own my own pictures of figures that you know I wanted to do. This is a Corvette Summer with Mark Hamill. That's another classic '70s film. If you haven't seen it, I highly I recommend it. I want to say I think I have, but like it's one of those where I'm I, maybe I did. And if I start watching yeah. it, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I've totally seen this. Just like the movie Fandango. It's like, you right. know, it's one of those where like all of a sudden you're like, oh, yeah, I've seen this. <laughs> right, right. And this was the first card where I actually, and again, it's a one off. I'm eventually going to put these on eBay and see if I can sell the, the originals. But this is the first one where I actually put the figures that I originally had wanted to do on the back of the card. No oh, funny. So I, I had intentions of doing all those figures. Like the ones on Bobby Fischer are totally silly and stupid, you know, like Bill Watterson, Kaiser Soze, King Brian, basically <laughs> like Bigfoot type, Bigfoot type characters, all the reclusive celebrities. You series. couldn't delve enough into his uh, origin story <laughs> for more characters? What? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. 
And, you know, and then I did some other one-offs. Like I did this one. Uh, I found this Jason. T- I did a Jason Todd. Oh, okay. And I did just nice and simple. I found this really chewed up, beat up Robin figure. Yeah. At a toy store, and it's from like the '70s. It's like one of these rubberized kind of kind of figures, and it looked like a dog ate it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so so beaten up. And I thought that would be a perfect Jason Todd. So I did like the casket. You know, I didn't draw the artwork, obviously. You know, it's a bootleg figure, and it's a one-off, so it's not my artwork. I'm trying to recognize the... who did the artwork. I can totally tell the style of it. It looks like oh, Jeff. It's, uh... it's Jeff Loeb. It's okay, definitely it's Jeff, Jeff Loeb. Loeb. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely Jeff Loeb. You know, shout out to Jeff Loeb. No, no copyright infringement intended. It's only a one-off. And then I actually put the original page, because if you remember the story back in the 80s, it was a dial-up, 1-800 dial-up. If you dial this number, Jason Todd lives. If you dial this number, Jason Todd dies. Right. And this was the alternative page that was possibly going to be printed. He lives, you know, okay. at the bottom. I wrote, yeah, alas, it was not to be, but that's okay. The Red Hood is a much better character. <laughs> yeah. And and uh, how else would DC be, have been able to reboot their storyline several times based on this? I mean, it's right up there with the whole uh, uh, Death of Superman thing. It's like the two areas where it's like oh we'll just alternate timelines or yeah. you know or uh something happened in this thing seriously they base every single change or like big abrupt thing like it's mm-hmm. they they may as well just uh reboot dallas again and go oh actually he dreamt that Dal- or whatever his name was bobby from dallas bobby ewing oh jr yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, like JR. they could just have every season be like oh and he also uh, dreamt this instead. Anyway, sorry. Little rant about the DC. I love DC, my favorite comic book universe, but still, it's like, okay, enough with the basing things on the def- death of Jason Todd. Yeah. Sorry. All right. End of no, rant. It's, okay. um, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> the, I totally uh, get it. Believe me. And stop doing number one issues and rebooting your damn universe every five years. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What are you, an operating system? Um, yeah. <laughs> Hey, I just wanted to take a break from the show to tell you about my website, TomRay'sWebsite.com. So if you go there, not only is that where the podcast is located, but I also do a daily autobiographical webcomic, and I have a vlog that I do now where I talk about how I've started my own business. It's about basically going through my day. A lot of it is I sell pop culture items that I collect. It's one of my obsessions, and I just decided, what if I really dug into it went out, collected more, and then actually turned that into something that I could flip so I can continue selling them, so I can continue getting them. The place that I sell them is right on the website, tomraiswebsite.com. And if you go to the top or into the sidebar, there's a link to my eBay store and you can go and check out all the stuff that I have. That was all I wanted to say. Visit tomraiswebsite.com and help support the show. So when I first talked to you and had you on the podcast i went and actually met you at your first tour of Mm -hmm. the con scene right yeah yeah, and that was when i talked to you and you had first shown me you had a indiana jones alfred e newman and i thought that was Mm -hmm. fascinating i was like well that's neat and i didn't really know much about the whole until you know eventually you look things up and then you find a youtube channel like we talked about and i found out about creating resins and then all that kind of bootlegging figures and stuff then Mm -hmm. the next time you came through town i was in between seasons of the podcast and i just went to go see you at the comic-con your booth had drastically changed and like you were saying i had noticed that you're like because the first time you were just like i do drawings and you were selling um oh and i learned about um what are they called the uh the blank covers what are they actually called oh 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 the yeah the variant covers the blank the, where artists the sketch covers artist sketch covers yeah and and oh yeah bl- they were just called blanks because i remember somebody yeah. came up and uh, they were talking to you about blanks and i'm like what the hell mm-hmm. is that and me even yeah. being on the comic scene i had no idea that's what they were so that was fascinating to me and that actually i went home and like that gave me ideas for other stuff like even just Mm -hmm. talking to you i was like that's really cool and i had different ideas for um comics that i had where i just thought of fact like you know just using the covers for things or even just using the insides for things or oh shoot i don't have it with me but like making a wallet out of one like i I, my wallet that i've actually had for the past year is made out of a comic book cover anyway the uh the and then the next time you came around you had tons of uh, figures and toys and things like you were 
and you're right. The the Comic Con is literally like a toy shop now. It's not. Re- there are some indie yeah. comic artists, but when you were there, you were selling things like that. But several people kept coming back to you, and they were asking for custom sketch card sketches. So yes. you were still doing that. But like, yeah. what was the? What was really the? Uh, I guess well, how much? How much would you say you did of each? Like, what was more successful? What was the kind of interaction well, you had with those? Right. I've always been more successful because I, I used to do um, like Kane County Toy Show. Okay. You've ever been to Kane County Toy Show? It's the biggest toy show in the world. It's usually, uh, it used to be three times a year. Now it's only two. It's like in April and October out of Kane County Fairgrounds. And okay. so I've done the toy shows where I collect toys. I get tired of them. I take them to the toy show and I sell them. And it was very much a, a it's like a flip proposition. Some of the stuff is in box. Some of the stuff is loose. It's a garage sale environment for toy collectors. Mm-hmm. And what I've learned is the toy, the comic book shows, the smaller shows are very much like that. They're very much hit or miss. Um, if you're a name and you've you've done published comic work, you can sell artwork and be and do very well. I sat next to, I've sat next to some very famous comic book artists at even the smaller shows, and they're selling artwork like gangbusters. And then they look at my booth, and I'm like. They don't recognize anything I do. Right. I can draw Batman all day. I can draw Superman all day. I can draw Luke Skywalker all day mm-hmm. um, on a sketch card. But it's like, all right, it's trying to chase trends and chase people down. And it yeah. got very tiring. That's why my booth went from my 100% my artwork to half and half. Because I knew at least I could get people to show up at the booth. And look at toys and, and, and be like, wow, that's really cool, especially my customs. You know, wow, those are really cool. Those are sale. And I've been doing custom figures of all scales and sizes for years. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the reason I kind of led me back to doing this because originally I was doing one six scale figures where we take, a, you know, a resin head and we put it on a G.I. Joe body and dress it in clothes. And a friend of mine was sculpting heads and we were casting heads. That's where we did the mash Allen and Alda. We did we cast a mash. We did... Six scale figures for military collectors and, and superhero collectors alike. Then I got into doing like the Alfred E. Newman as Indiana Jones and those six inch figures. Um, I've mm-hmm. got a Thor as, as uh, the big Lebowski on my shelf. Uh, I got to show you that since I, since I mentioned it. That's the Thor Lebowski. Oh, it's huge. And it's, it, and, well, and it, yeah, it's like a nine inch figure. And it's, a, it's literally a, a big Lebowski figure from, I think, Biff Bang Pow put them out and I just like made the beard longer and I got the, got the robe and the Thor hammer and it's like, it's perfect, you know? So I do customs like that. I've been doing stuff like that for years for my own pleasure and entertainment. And then you take them to sell shows and you sell them. Yeah. So we did this caricature of Richard Pryor and I thought, Hey, I could do three and three quarter inch figures. Doesn't involve sculpting or I mean, I'm sorry. doesn't involve sewing. I don't have to, I don't have to, I don't have to source costumes because I can't sew. Sourcing costumes is a pain in the ass for for figures if you don't know how to sew. Mm-hmm. All it's going to evolve is, is is getting my sculpting skills back and getting back into resin silicone mold making and resin casting. Okay, you know. So it, I thought, all right, that's something I can do. I can at least have a, a a focused media and produce a product that maybe once we get out of Coronaville, I could start doing the small shows again and maybe it'll sell. The other options are um, I I am working on setting up an Etsy store. I I've had okay. some success selling on eBay, um, but eBay's hit or miss. Um, you know I can put up what it's what I think it's worth. Like I was originally selling the Yodas for fifty bucks. Right. Nobody wants to pay fifty bucks for it. You know. But th- that's the thing too is it's the experience I've had and one of the reasons I started like I'm on eBay now and what I've learned over the past year has dramatically changed and I've adjusted. And one of the reasons I, I mean, well, first, cause it's easy, like much like you, I can just take something where I'm like, I find it interesting. And you probably would find half of the things that I sell on eBay interesting, but I don't do anything to them. My main right. reason that I started doing it one was so I would have an excuse to collect more stuff, but two, <laughs> of course, that's why we all do it. <laughs> but two, here's the real reason. And this is why I started doing it. When I was trying to promote what I do, selling my own book of, the collection of my comic. Like I have a yearly book. Uh, it's been three years now and I have, I'm working on a third edition and it's a collection of the actual web comics that I put together. Yes. But yes, trying to I sell follow, them, I follow, 
Thank you very much. And uh, <laughs> TomRaceWebsite.com if you're not there already. First started, yeah. <laughs> um, so, but the thing was, is when I kept trying to sell it, it was like, how do I say it? What do I call it? What are the keywords I'm looking for? Basically, I, everything I wrote was just like, I don't know what I'm saying. And I would sell it. And maybe I'd sell a couple. Maybe I'd, I'd go out and try and find new people. I would try to, I wanted to amp it up. But I didn't know really how... I work, I've work. i worked in advertising, building websites mm -hmm. and things like that. I can sell other people's stuff like no one's business. Trying to sell your own stuff is really hard because you feel like basically the second you write something, everyone you know can read it and they're yeah. going to say like, that's not what you do. What? That that sounds stupid. And that's that literally goes through my head when I'm writing that stuff. So I started eBay because with all these items, every single one is different. How am I going to find the people that will be interested in it? What words am I going to use? Like it, and I have no emo, well, I have emotional attachment to it because I think they're cool, but I just think they're sure. cool. Sure. And, and so basically every day I go on there and go, what would I call this? I write a title. What, you know, I practice writing a headline. I practice writing a description, putting the keywords in there. And I've gotten really good at it. When I first started, it was all about like, okay, this is the manufacturer that made it and the color of it and the size of it. And I would put all that in the title. And it's like, no, uh, then I would do this now, this vintage books or yeah, vin yeah. vintage book, my little ABC from 1972. That would be right. the title because basically there's going to be a picture of it. And they just need to know when they're looking at it that it's not a piece of paper, it's a book and it's vintage. Yeah. And then in mm -hmm. the keywords, I would be like vintage book, illustrated, uh, blah, blah, blah. But I got really good at keywords. And that was, that's what I'm saying is like with doing that, the more that you post the stuff or even altering the post itself, it's just like a web page. It's it, the more you do it, the more you kind of understand it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, mm -hmm. when I say you, I mean me, like I, I can't speak to what you do. I'm just saying that's what I learned. And that's literally the reason I like doing eBay. Then I started making money at it. And I was like, well, that's helpful. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it's, it's funny you mentioned that because you said, how am I, what am I doing with this? How am I getting this out there? And part of it is with Instagram, I've got three different Instagram accounts. I've right. got my personal account, which is Scott Pyburn. I've got my cooking account because I used to be a chef, which is called Food Fire and Knives. Mm -hmm. And I've got my Toysaholics account, which is focused on this toy making stuff. And so it's interesting how many likes I'll get by just, I learned what hashtags were all about. Oh, yeah. You know, back in the day, a hashtag was a pound sign on a telephone. And, you Hi. know, I just, I just, I didn't know, like, the power of the hashtag. Mm -hmm. And when I when I started this account in March, I don't have I don't have a ton of followers. I've got 188 followers on my my Toysaholics, which isn't bad. You know, I'm, I'm I would love to be in the thousands. I haven't figured that out, but it's the fun of figuring out what hashtags to use to get the eyeballs. Mm -hmm. I'll put something online and I'll get 50, 60, 70 eyeballs with a hat with the right hashtag in an hour. Mm -hmm. And it's like, all right, people aren't following me, but I'm getting the, the, the eyeballs. I'm getting the likes. Mm -hmm. I'm getting so-and-so liked your post, so-and-so liked your post. And sometimes if you go and you check their account out and you like some of their stuff, then you get followers. Yeah. So for me, it's a long game. It's like, all right, I want to get established in this, this community. Yes, I want to sell some product. Um, we all want, as artists, we all want, that's the ultimate validation is you value me, you value my, my creation so much that you want it for your own personal collection. I'm not doing this to sell widgets. If I, you know, I used to sell pizza that, <laughs> that, that's right. a, you know, that's a hell of a lot easier than making toys. Um, but it's, it's more satisfying when somebody sees your artistic value, something you've created and, and to speaking to what you're saying with you, you building this business mm -hmm. um, of meeting people and selling items and, and, and trying to figure out what your passion is. Mm -hmm. And for my artistic niche or niche or however you pronounce it, um, I've always been struggling to find it. You know, it was like, oh, I'm going to do sketch cards. Oh, I'm going to do comics. Oh, I'm going to do uh, caricatures. And then but I've always been a toy collector. I've mm -hmm. always been a toy fan. Always. And so it was like, duh, this is what you should be doing. And I would say that even the toys that you're making, while you're talking about people aren't buying them, think of your, your booth. And this is totally just off the top of my head. And I'm like, 
I have no idea. Yeah. Like, d- take whatever I say with just like I'm. I'm just saying, like, hey, why don't you try this? Um, sure, sure. With that, I mean, if you build the Etsy store, I mean, just like I was saying, the card back, somebody would go, I would love, in my opinion, somebody would say, I would love to get one of these toys, but man, I can't afford it. Oh, that card thing is 10 bucks, free shipping. I, I'll get that. Yeah. Or, you know, or the sketch cards are like all that, like you could sell them all in one place and fill up your Etsy store. I know that you want to fill it up right. with toys, but yeah. I, and and, and you may already and, be doing that. I may be like well, completely telling you like, duh. No, I mean, no, you're, 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 you're in my head, man. That's kind of creepy right. because that's, that's part of what I've been thinking about. One, I've been doing a couple things. I've been, when somebody buys something from me as a thank you, mm-hmm. I'm throwing in like a sketch card or I'm throwing in buttons. I'm throwing yeah. in extra stuff in the box just to say, Hey, you know, I really appreciate you supporting my art. I really do. Um, like I sold like four Ludos. Um, I made a couple brown ones and I made a couple glow in the dark ones and they sold. Um, That's awesome. So, so once they, once I finish all the glitter ones, all the one of a kinds, I'm hoping to put those up and hopefully they'll sell. But yeah, I, I, I appreciate again, having customers. It's, it's not customers for me. It's relationships. You know, I'm making friends online. I'm right. talking to some of these other artists. We're trading. Um, I'm going to be in this online show. It's called an I. It's an IKEA show. Um, an and IKEA if you go to my, show. yeah, this 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 artist, um, Slug Toys. I'll give a shout out to Slug Toys. Right. He's called Slug Toys on Instagram. He decided to to curate a show, and the theme of the show is IKEA. And I asked him, why do you, why did you, how did you come up with IKEA? And part right. of it was he said, like his grandparents um, used to take him to IKEA as a kid, and he loved it. But he was also like, IKEA is a very polarizing company. You either love IKEA or you don't. Okay. It's like it's like Disneyland. I get it. And, it, and I told him, I look at it as like Disneyland on crack for housewares. You go in there, there's three <laughs> floors. They got a food court up on top. They sell meatballs. They do all kinds of stuff. It was my TARDIS, my phone going off. Wow. Um, so all kinds of stuff. So he's like, come up with some figures that are are Kia figures. Wow, everybody's I'm gonna turn my look at you, Mr. Off. Popular. So You're saying you want to interact with people and all every, of a sudden no, people every, start interacting with you. Uh, yeah, it's one of my friends and my wife is taking my daughter out, so it's fine. But um so he was like, What are you gonna do? You know, and part of what he did was he traded some figures. Because I'm like, how do you do this? What do we do? Do I, I make you some figures? I send you some figures. Are you going to ship them back? And he's like, no. Kind of what I do is I offer my uh, figure for a figure for trade. And so he sent me a couple of his figures, and he's going to keep mine, so he doesn't have to send them back. And that's fine. I was like, he was up and up about it, up and up front about it. And I'm like, we're connecting, and 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 uh, so he's curating this show, and it goes online September 25th. Okay. And again, he's called Slug Toys. So if you find Slug Toys on Instagram. It's the IKEA based show, and I made two figures for him. I did this uh, this IKEA bot. I found this little blue and gold R two D two Funko Pop, right. and it was just it's like it's like an R two D two in IKEA colors. I was like, it was perfect. I found a buck at one of my local toy shows. The guy was nice. selling a bag of them, so I bought that. I and on the top of his head, I put a push pin and a Simpsons tray of cookies, mm-hmm. but I sculpted them into meatballs. And I put two arms on him, and in one arm he's got a glass holding a cocktail napkins, yeah. and in the other hand he's got a, a glass uh, holding, uh, mm-hmm. uh, or a, uh, he's got cocktail napkins in one hand and a glass of picks of like toothpicks in another. Okay. And so it's like this meatball droid, and that's that's one of the characters that I did. And then I casted an Oompa Loompa, which I've got these. I got this Oompa Loompa, um, what you call it? It's a uh, Christmas ornament, and so I casted it. And so oh. I put him. He's in the Oompa Loompa position, and yeah. then I put a church key, one of those one of those S-shaped uh, IKEA keys that you get with every product, and it's on oh, a rainbow. To put it and, together, that is yeah. a pain in the ass. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So he's like, he's like, ah, oh, here's the tool, and it's tool T U umlaut L. Okay. So T U L with a rainbow Oompa Loompa background. So those were the two figures I did for the oh show, God. and and uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. It's some exposure. It's getting. Getting my name out there. I'm in the same show with a ton of bootleg artists that are well more well known than I am. I do I do like that. I have been seeing a lot of uh, a lot of those types of online auction live shows displaying work, and I'm kind of 
really jealous, but at the same time, super happy that people are doing that. Like, like I would, I'm like, God, I want to do that, but I don't, I don't know, but I love right. watching them and there are people on, they're doing Facebook live, uh, Instagram. So where, where is this going to be again? It's on September so it's, 25th it, and it's September where? 25th and it's going to be on Instagram. Okay. Um, it is on Instagram. Okay. If you, if you go follow my page again, Toysaholics or go follow slug toys, he's the guy who's hosting the show. Okay. And, um, he, he, he's got a list um, on his page of all the artists. And you can even look those artists up, those, right. all those bootleg guys up on Instagram and start following, checking them out, following all those guys. That'll get you into the scene. <laughs> yeah. And I want to check it out too, just because with setting this up, I love seeing how, I mean, to learn more about it, I love to see people mm -hmm. doing this and going, how are they promoting it? How are they putting it online? What ways are they going about setting up this live stream? Cause mm -hmm. I mean, I'll do a live stream and I just turn on my camera and start going, Hey, and maybe one or two people will show up because I do no preparation. I just get the idea and I'm like, let's go. Um, right, so right, I need to right. get better was, at promoting that. So, <laughs> yeah, and that's okay. Like, like the other day I was, I was on Instagram and I saw you and I joined your, right. your, your live and I was like, Oh, cool. And you gave me some shout outs. So I was like, exactly. Oh. <laughs> and the other thing, here's, here's an interesting thing I wanted to mention when you're talking about finding the people and bringing them over. Um, mm -hmm. and it's just something that I've been experimenting with. And I feel with what you do, this particular area would work as well. Um, so what I've been doing is I've been cross posting my web comics uh, uh, on Imgur and have Imager, you I, I haven't, I've, I've got, it's on my list of things to look up Imgur. Imgur. Yeah. Just yeah. create an account. It's so it's okay. I M G U R and okay. it's where everybody shares memes, but there are, it's like, it's basically like Reddit for photos. So and it's kind of Pinteresty. No, not at all. No. It is where okay. like, when you go look at it, it's, it's where, you know, when you see memes of like the, uh, disgrunt or what is it? The cat at the dinner table and the woman screaming yeah. at him and people putting captions. It's yeah. stuff like that. It is, okay. it is literally the stuff where you find, first of all, you'll find tons of funny memes. And when you first go there, you're just going to look through and see stuff, but you can follow different categories like comics, action figures. And it's, oh, nice. it's people okay. that it's, it's just a, a website where people post memes and photos, but you can put in the uh, post that you put up there, just say, here's the source of the material and put a link to where it is. And right. you, and it also has likes and unlikes and much like Reddit, you're going to be very surprised at how many unlikes you get. It's really yeah. weird, but you, so it's also the other reason that I do it is because I need to build up a thicker skin when, uh, I get something <laughs> negative online. So this way yeah. I, I can go there and see like what works and what doesn't. I literally reposted the anniversary of my dog being put to sleep on mm -hmm. Imgur and I've never gotten so many unlikes in the entire world. And people like wow. people even commenting, like going, um, okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and, yeah. And I'm like, all right, all right thicker skin. I'm working on it. So, it's, it's but then the funny. next day I posted something where it was like, uh, I don't even remember what it was, but it was something so stupid. Like I was driving in my car and I saw something and it got like 10 million, not 10 million, but it got a bunch of up likes and people going, yeah, me too. And it's like, nothing happened. This is just like a stupid, like here's something funny that happened. Anyway, uh, that's near here, but I, I enjoy posting there now. I actually get tons, even if it's bad traffic, it's totally the place where it's like even bad press is good press type thing. Like even if people vote it down, other people will see the link in the description and go to my site. And like most of my traffic in the past, I've been trying it for a month now. And most okay. of my traffic in the past month has actually been coming from that website. And oh, wow. it's because of stuff like it's people posting pictures of their drawings. It's a lot of right. okay. and, and toys and stuff. And that's what I'm saying. The like web comics and memes and pictures of toys. And if you're doing custom toys, it, I would say, give it a try. I'm not saying yeah. it will work, but I feel I, like your stuff would do well there. So I just wanted I'll to share that. Will, and I've been testing I it out myself. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I will definitely check it out. Part of me is like, Oh God, another social media site. I got to figure right. out how, no, this how is, to work and this how is to do. And you blah, don't blah, even blah. have to pay attention to it. This is literally like, you don't have to go there and like set up, you know, right. things. It, it's you post your picture and go, the source of it is located here. Like nice. you don't even have nice. to think of anything else and you can adjust with it. Like it's, yeah, it's yeah. a, it's a dumping ground for pictures, but people go there to find stuff and they'll search for things or they'll follow a certain category. And no, I'll have to so definitely give it a check try. It out. I would for sure. I've, I've been enjoying it. But again, like I said, you're also going to get a lot of people telling you 
like it's it's like YouTube comments. You're gonna get a lot of really weird like, why is this person angry at me? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. It, and I'm actually getting, like I said, a thicker skin because of it, which is what I need. Because sometimes I'll uh, I'll get a bad comment and it'll just crush me. And then I'm like, why am I letting this bother me? Right. Right. It's like, get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah. But um, that was, I mean, that's, that's, ba- I don't know if I like that you have this, uh, I just started like three sentences in a row there. Uh, <laughs> like I'm waiting. Like, where's he going? Where's he going? Yeah, like I know. The He's going here. He's going here. <laughs> Basically, what I was gonna say is just to remind people if they're listening. So on September 25th, Slug Toys, you're gonna be doing a live feed. I'm happy that you're doing that. I'm glad that we're able to talk about that. I want to try and get this yeah. out before that date. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. No, absolutely. And and part of it again, it's just it's meeting these people online and talking to them. Uh, I, I'm I'm talking to Killer Bootlegs, who's one of the big guys. He actually produced a toy with Super Seven, which is part oh, of neat. Reaction, which is part of Funko. Oh yeah, you know I follow I follow is. Super Seven. They do a lot of really <clears throat> cool remake so, toys. Do you know Do you know the Phantom Star Killer? Probably. Go to if Super Seven's it. website. It's like it's like a it's like a crossover between. Darth Vader and the Grim Reaper, and he's got a lightsaber that comes out of his hand, and he's, you know, he's taken different action figures and cobbled them together and created this original character. Okay. Well, he's been bootlegging this character for years, and he finally got picked up and noticed by Super Seven. So he's produced two, if not three, figures through Super Seven, and I was like, wow. So I mean, there's potential if I come up with something original at some point, you know. Oh, that's again, cool. it's just it's a matter of doing something original, which eventually I want to do right now. I'm just kind of doing bashes and mashes and having some fun with it. Yeah. Well, that's, I'm, I'm, it's interesting. They, uh, the pivot that you've done since I've talked to you, but yet at the same time, it was kind of always there with the, the yeah. toys that you were making, you know? And, and, and part of me is like, duh, why did I get out of resin casting? I should have stayed in it. You know, I, I know. dumped it for like 10 years back when Sideshow was doing, Sideshow Toys was doing uh, the Universal Monster license. Uh-huh. And they were just getting started selling figures for 40 bucks a piece. That's when we were doing heads and we were selling 12-inch figures. And then Hot Toys came along and just kind of like torpedoed us yeah. with the quality of toys that they're doing. I'm like, we can't even compete with that. And we we stopped selling stuff. And then I got out of it for a long time. No, I'm, it's like I feel like Michael Corleone. And they, they pulled me back in. Oh. <laughs> I was waiting to see if that's what you're going to do. Well, I'm glad I got a chance to see the pivot that you've done uh, in your in your stuff. And I, I, I hope that uh, I hope that it gets... I hope that it takes off. I, it's really cool that you're doing it, and man, you're set up like you've got all the stuff. Like you're. Oh, you're it's working. crazy. My, so my whole my whole basement workbench is blown up. <laughs> it's just yeah. It's like, and and I'm thinking of a new figure, a new something to do every single day, and I've got a notebook, and I'm just writing stuff down frantically, and I'm like, Scott, you got to focus. Right. It's it's four, easy to think of all the stuff you want to do. It's the doing got, it part got, that sucks. I got. <laughs> Four characters right now that molds are made that I could be finishing, that I could be putting online, but it's like, squirrel, let's go over here. Yeah, right. All right. Well, I want to thank you for uh, talking with me again today. I'm so glad that I got to hook up with you again. Oh, Tom, thank you so much for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. I'm a big fan. (laughs) 